Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jenny Allen. And before we get started with to and before we get started with today's video, please make sure that you are subscribed, that you thumbs up this video and check the description box below. I've got lots of things in the description box below. So welcome to today's video. I'm so excited because we're day today we're starting the reading. Today we're starting the reading of the Esther anointing. And I want to first of all thank you for your really really lovely response to the news that I'm going to be launching a book club I really really appreciate that and all the beautiful comments thank you so much ladies thank you so so much because my desire is to see you move forward and excel in the gifts and talents that God has given you that is my absolute desire. And I've already read through this book. I've read this book about twice before and I've just finished reading it again in preparation for these series of videos. So in some videos, I will be able to record two chapters and in other videos, I will record one chapter. And these videos will be going out every Monday until the book is finished. So please read along with me. Leave your comments in the in the comment section below. Let me know which part of the chapters or what we've shared has ministered to you. Let's get a dialogue going in the comments section and thumbs up this video. Let Because when you thumbs up the video, that's the only way I'm going to know that this is actually ministering to you. It's not just for this video, it's with all my videos. If you thumbs up, I know that you really like it and that indicates to me that you like that particular type of content. So please make sure that you thumbs up the video. So there are some scriptures as well that I'm going to be going into in my Bible. This is my prayer Bible that I'm going to be using. Um, because if a scripture jumps out at me, I'm going to pick up my Bible and then we can read it together. So let me know your feedback. Let me know how you're feeling. Put it in the comment section. So let's get started. Oh, and also because we're having coffee time reading a book together, I've also got my cup of coffee here. So in between, I'll be having a little sip. <laughs> okay, so let's pray first of all. Father, I thank you. I thank you for this awesome privilege of being able to sit down with this with this beautiful community of women and study your word and read this book called the Esther anointing. And I pray, Father God, that as we read it together, that you, Holy Spirit, will really, really minister to us about our gifts and our talents that the Father has deposited in our lives. I pray, Lord, that you would really touch our hearts, that if our hearts are stony in a particular area, that you will give us hearts of flesh as we read. Inspire us, Holy Spirit. Encourage us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to read the introduction you were made for more. So let's get started. Chapter, the introduction, the introduction. Also, let me know if you like this style of video um, or if you want me to be showing the text as well. I'm reading it like this under the assumption that you all have the book and you're going to follow along. OK, so you were made for more. Can you imagine an all-female army? Women marching in complete synchronization with the candescent of the Holy Spirit, moving together in unity with distinction and dignity to advance the kingdom of God. I believe that this is a season where the beauty and power of women will be on display. Decades of oppression will come to an end Satan knows that when women discover their true identity in Christ, his evil kingdom will come to an abrupt end. I believe the body of Christ will see a manifestation of what Psalm 68 declares. The Lord gives the command, 
the women who proclaim the good tidings are a great host. A strategic time in human history is coming when God will give a command and an army of women who proclaim the good news will arise in the earth. Not at all like the feminist movement, this new breed of women will not attempt to carry out their mission copying the dress and behaviour of men. No, quite the contrary. These women will be arrayed in the softest silk and elegant high heels. They will be armed with resolve, wisdom and true discernment. Understanding that the true enemy has been Satan and not men or one another. They will embrace their femininity as being a blessing and gift from God. I believe that we are this new breed of women. The devil has blurred the lines and devalued the power of being feminine. We don't have to hide our feminine qualities and compete with men to accomplish our purposes. We must develop a clear understanding of who God created us to be. We must get a clear vision of God's ideal and make his standards the standards by which we live. We can't buy into the lies that say male standards are the standards we must emulate to gain respect, fulfill our purposes and find our identities in this society. Only Jesus has the key to our true identities. God did not create women to do everything men can do. Equality does not mean sameness. Equality means each person is valued at the same level as another for their unique contribution. In fact, the very differences we have are our greatest strengths when recognised and used effectively instead of being at odds with one another. The word of God clearly teaches us that men and women are meant to be partners in life, not just in marriage. When we come together in unity and mutual respect and mutually respect and depend on each other's unique gifts, we begin to express the complete image of God in the earth. Men and women alike were created in God's image and likeness. Our society changes its expectations of us from, from generation to generation. This is why it must be his word alone that we use to correct the distortions and devaluing of differences between men and women. His word for us does not change. Women were created to express God's rule and reign in the feminine form. God has mantled women with the gift of leadership to influence and impact the world for good. God created women to be nurturers. We were designed to influence and inspire those in our sphere with godly wisdom and gentle encouragement. We are helpers. We support and champion dreams and visions. Godly femininity is non-threatening and does not seek to intimidate. Godly femininity is power under control. There is a great move of the Holy Spirit amongst women. Women all over the world are feeling a passion welling up within our spirits that says, I was made for more. God is liberating us to move from a place of inferiority and competition and fear to a place of power, influence and courage. If you feel that welling up inside of you, type in the description box, in the comment section, sorry, I was made for more. Type that in the comment section. I was made for more. 
No longer are we feeling the pressure to put on fatigues to impersonate the masculine, but we are being healed and delivered from tradition and religion that have held us captive for centuries. The Lord is releasing his favour and grace upon us to fulfil his purposes in the earth. The question is, will we submit to the process of being trained and commissioned to fulfil these purposes? We are being called to use our gifts and talents to impact our society, to preach, teach, pray, prophesy and deliver nations. God is empowering us to follow his ordained direction. We are arising and influencing the world in ways we have never done. Women are rising with a new level of determination, courage and unwavering faith. With this newfound resolve, we must be prepared and positioned properly. We must examine how God wants to raise us up to influence the kingdom and the world. I believe the combination of prayer and action will be two major keys to, inf to women influencing their spheres of authority. Women are some of the most valuable, untapped resources. We are God's secret weapon. If you feel that and if you believe that, type in the comment, se in the comment section, I am God's secret weapon. Light is shining and favour from God is being bestowed on women to be all that they can be. God is establishing godly women with authority and positioning them with influence that will bring freedom to societies throughout the earth. Godly, grace-filled women are being positioned to overthrow the plans of the enemy, divine positioning. When I think of this supernatural shift in co is causing, sorry, when I think of this supernatural shift, God is causing in the lives of women. I think of my friend and colleague and councilwoman, Apostle Kimberly Daniels. In her college days, Apostle Kimberly was the fastest female sprinter in the nation. She then joined the military and became one of the fastest female sprinters in the world. Then her life took a turn and she spiralled into a life on the streets. But God stepped in and her destiny was reversed. What was meant for bad became one of her greatest assets in the kingdom. Through this process of life, being the fastest woman sprinter in the nation to living life on the street, Apostle Kimberly gained the ability to relate to people from all backgrounds. Through her ministry, she shares her testimony globally and has led many to miraculous salvations, inner healings and deliverance. She has a bachelor's degree in criminology, a master's degree in Christian education and a doctorate in Christian counselling. But she didn't stop there. In 2011, Apostle Kimberly was elected to the Jacksonville, Florida City Council, receiving almost 93,000 votes while managing her own campaign. She did in two months what her opponents who campaigned for two years could not do. Her election results were miraculous and historical with both her church, spoken word ministries and her position on the city council, Apostle Kimberly is currently influencing her city in both the spiritual and political realms. She is a modern day example of the full manifestation of the Esther anointing. What is the Esther anointing? There is a pivotal time in Esther's story when her past and present converged and her anointing was pressed out and revealed.
At that point of convergence was where God, the great apothecary, took all of the bitter and sweet experiences of Esther's life and crushed them together under the oil of the Holy Spirit to produce what I'm calling in this book, the Esther anointing. The Esther anointing is a grace that is being bestowed upon women to influence the current culture for the purposes of the kingdom of God. The anointing of Esther is one of courage and righteous boldness exercised with great wisdom to confront the injustice and deliver a generation from destruction. Modern day Esthers will have a humble, grace-filled, teachable spirit acquired through submitting to the process of the Lord. Many of the modern day Esthers have been in places of obscurity, seemingly hidden and forgotten by God. But suddenly they will be taken out of the comfort zone of life and placed in positions where they have to speak a new language, learn a new culture and overcome gender prejudice. God in his infinite wisdom and uniquely designed school of the spirit has been equipping them for such a time as this. He uses every crisis, every injustice and every victory to work together for their good. They have been learning obedience from the things they have suffered. They have been serving the purposes of God in the wilderness like places, learning to submit to authority in order to become women of authority. Bitterness will not be the undertone of this company of Esthers. As Song of Solomon's 8.5 asks the question, Who is this coming up from the wilderness, leaning and depending upon her beloved? These women will be motivated by the, motivated by the love of God, leaning on his strength and abilities. They will not be intimidated by natural laws or deterred by the opinions of men. The fear of the Lord and hatred for the enemy will be the driving forces of these Esthers. Many of these women will dominate, will demonstrate authentic beauty, embrace their identities and manifest the power of God in feminine form. They will develop strategic holy alliances with male mentors, as Esther did with Haggai and Mordecai, to demolish division and competition between men and women. These modern day Esthers will have an anointing to gather people around the purposes of God. They will understand the times and the seasons of God. They will facilitate gatherings of fasting and prayer to plead for life before the courts of heaven and earth. The anointing of Esther is one of influence, righteous boldness, wisdom, femininity and favour. The favour that modern day Esthers will carry is not for selfish gain. They understand that God's favour is to be used for their assignments in the earth. It's by God's favour that they are able to bring forth granted petitions, even by ungodly civil authorities. This favour causes policies, rules, regulations and laws to be changed and reversed for the, king, for the advantage of the kingdom. Esther chapter 8 verse 5. Are you a modern day Esther? Where are you today on your own journey? Are you discounting the significance of your life because you are a woman? Have you lost hope in seeing the promises of God fulfilled in your life? Maybe you are thinking there have been so many terrible things that have happened in your life that God could never use you. Maybe you've said to yourself, I've made too many mistakes. The entire framework of the Esther anointing is rooted in a reversal of destiny. 
The Esther story is an example of how at one crucial moment in history, the covenant promises God had made were fulfilled. Not by his miraculous interventions, but through completely ordinary events. The Esther story could be your story. God will take ordinary events in your life to fulfill some extraordinary promises to you. The book of Esther is full of hidden hope. It is the one book in the Bible that does not mention the name of God, yet the message of God's grace and redemption permeates each word. On the surface, it appears as though God is absent, but Esther's story proves that he is always at work behind the scenes in our lives to cause us to walk in our destiny in the earth. This book will discuss the ways God reveals destiny to his leading ladies who keep him as their priority. If you are God's leading lady, put in the comment section, I'm God's leading lady. It will identify character traits that you must develop in order to fulfill your destiny. Lead you to know how, when and where your unique gifts operate best. Show you how to uncover and guard against snares that will keep you from boldly walking in your assignment and give you the motivation and encouragement you need to move into a place of significance. Like Esther, you will learn how to yield to the call of God, to the call on your life and submit to the Holy Spirit's purification process. Esther went through a season of preparation physically and spiritually. You will see how her respect for prayer and fasting made her the humble vessel God used to rescue individuals, turn circumstances and deliver nations. Esther was a woman of clear judgment, courage and self-sacrifice. Esther was lifted from exile and poverty to being queen. She did not allow her background to determine what God could do with her future. If you sense you have an Esther anointing bubbling up on the inside of you, join me in the pages of this book as we discover what you have been designed to influence. The greatest thing that can happen in your life, the greatest source of empowerment you can have is when you discover your position in the prophetic unfolding plan of God. I'm just going to underline something here because something just jumped out at me. Join me in the pages of this book as we discover what you have been designed to influence. We're going to discover as we read what we have been designed to influence. The greatest thing that can happen to you in life the greatest source of empowerment you can have is when you discover your position in the prophetic unfolding plan of God. This will be your unique factor when you are anointed to do what you are anointed to do. My prayer is that you get acquainted with your anointing and become more and more aware of what you are here to do declaration and prayers to activate the Esther anointing. I declare in the name, you can say this along with me when it, because you have the book, we can read it together. I declare in the name of Jesus that I will arise as a mighty woman of God from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept me. I will rise to a new life. I declare that this is a season where old things are passing away and all things are becoming, being made new in my life. God is calling me to active duty in his heavenly army. I declare 
that this is a time where the Heavenly Father will make all of my God-given dreams and aspirations come to fruition. I declare that this is my time and season to accomplish and live in God's ordained purpose and destiny. I declare that I will arise from fear and embrace the courage of the Lord. O oh Lord, I thank you that you are an extraordinary God who will accomplish extraordinary things through me. I release myself from self-imposed limitations. I break every limitation that the enemy has placed on my life. Lord, your word says, loose thyself, O daughter of Zion. Isaiah 52 verse 2. And in the name of Jesus, I loose myself from every limitation, barrier, obstruction and demonic mindset that has kept me from meeting my full potential. No longer will I be deceived and trapped by traditions and the opinions of men. I was created for greatness. I was created to be God's glory carrier throughout the earth. I will arise and be radiant with the glory of the Lord. Let the glory of the Lord shine through me. I am a beaming lighthouse of hope for many who sit in gross darkness. Lord, give me words of wisdom that will guide and influence many. I will not remain silent. I will break every demonic conspiracy designed to keep me silent. I won't let my I won't let past failures and disappointments keep me silent. I will open my mouth wide and God will fill it. God, give me ideas, insights and concepts to bring deliverance to many. You have anointed me to impart to those in my sphere of influence. The words I speak will release life to a hurting generation. I am not in this world by chance. I am not in this decade by chance. I am not reading this book by chance. I am a modern day Esther. I stir up and activate the Esther anointing through prayer. I embrace my inner and outer beauty. I decree that the power of femininity is being awakened inside of me. Now, we've read this together. This is the introduction and I really hope it ministered to you like it's ministering to me. So God bless you and I will see you in my next video. The chapter, I'm not going to read chapter one because it will make this video too long. So chapter one will be uploaded for next week, Monday. So all the Esther readings will be on Mondays. OK, so God bless you. It'll be Sunday, Monday, Sunday, Monday because of the time zone. So it will be most probably Sunday uh, evening in the United States. OK, so God bless you and I will see you in my next video. God bless.